will do is eliminate turnover tax on some basic items such as baby food, milk, bread, cheese, butter, um, rice, flour, sugar, salt, chicken. Uh, by eliminating turnover tax on them, um, you are not placing the burden of the turnover tax, let's say, on the so-called small man, okay, the guy who makes less. These are things that he has to buy every day. These are things that he consumes every day. And um, we are saying, no, we are going to reduce it um, where that is concerned. The National Health Insurance Plan is also one of those things that is much talked about. Um, yes, they're, they're keeping us on though. SVB, SVB belong to Curacao. No. When we were ready to um, push forward with the, with the introduction or the implementation as, it, as government, um, the committee of stakeholders, some of the stakeholders themselves uh, were asking for a delay. Um, you're going too fast. We need to study it more. We need more information. And that is, that is okay. But if you need more information, and we can't make the deadline for implementation on the 10th of October, then we would have to purchase more time. So what government decided was, you know what? Instead of having uncertainty hanging over people's head, let us enter an agreement with SVB for one year, basically a year and two months. So the whole of 2011 and by the 1st of January 2012, we will begin that National Health Insurance Plan. Now, what are the benefits of it? The benefit of it is that everybody on St. Martin would then be insured. Uh, does it mean that you can't have another insurance? Yes, you can. The people who have private insurance and have good benefits from it, they can keep their private insurance. But you must purchase into the National Health Insurance Plan that guarantees every citizen coverage. Because if you only create a plan for, let's say, the, 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 the weaker persons in the community, uh, those who are unemployed, those who are on social aid, um, those who have retired and therefore can't afford a pension plan, um, a, a health insurance plan, um, if only those people this is for, then you're looking for trouble. But by, by including every, everybody, you have an insurance scheme that would have, let's say, 50, 55,000 clients, and then the spread of the risk becomes much better. Like I explain people sometimes when you're speaking to them, you say, if we would have an insurance that's just between you and I, we are the only two customers in that insurance plan, everything goes well as long as none of us get sick. The minute one of us gets sick, God forbid one operation, and the entire plan is bankrupt. Because how much can we be paying? So if we are paying $200 each a month, that would be $2,400 a month combined, a year. So combined $4,800, give and take, call it $5,000. The first year, man, things going good. The second year, even better. So we have $10,000 in an insurance that if one of us gets sick, we got money to take to cover it. God forbid, first major incident, and we can't even pay for the operation. But if we have 50,000 people, and all of them are paying into it, then we can guarantee that we can provide better coverage for our people. What is the single most important thing you would tell young people that are completely apolitical to get them involved in the electoral process? When I started to teach at uh, Leonard Connor School um, 30, plenty years ago, I remember I was accused by the then Democratic Party of um, teaching politics in school. And if I didn't stop, they would uh, fire me. And I tell them, well, they would have to. Because I'm not teaching any party politics, I'm teaching political conscientization. And I used to give classes where I tell the students, and we did it uh, with role plays. Um, we would, I would give a script to, to two, three people to read. And uh, we do it, let's say, for the captain of the football team. And this guy is campaigning to be the captain of the football team. And after 
everybody hold their speech in the class vote, we would ask them, why did you vote for this one? And why did you vote for that one? In the beginning, everybody was voting for the popular guy. The guy who would give them, uh, they would, every afternoon, uh, they, they go for an ice cream, they go here, they hang out, they go to the beach. Now, that was the captain that would win. Because the captain that would drill them and practice for two hours every day and then run 10 laps when they go to the field, they didn't want nothing to do with him. And after a while, people realized, the students realize, and you begin uh, a, a process of conscientization. Now, young people, um, everybody should be involved in the electoral process, but more so young people. But not on the, not on the basis of, what are you going to give me? But on the basis of, uh, what do you stand for? What do you represent? Um, what's your position on? What's your take on this? When this was happening in the island council, we paid attention and you voted against. Or we paid attention and you voted for. Or we paid attention, you didn't say one word. But we paid attention and what you said was this, which we think is good or we think it's wrong. Um, the voters on St. Martin, um, basically across the, the board, um, we have voters who are not consciously enough as to what they're doing. And particularly the young people, we believe need to uh, be uh, aware of what um, politics is about. It is not about uh, give me a rental and I'm going to drive around. Um, you are casting a vote to decide who your leaders are going to be for the next four years. And when you're making serious choices, if you have your young child and your son or daughter needs to see a doctor because he or she has a serious problem. You want to make sure that you take your child to the best doctor. When you're taking your family out, let's say for dinner, you're making sure you take them to a restaurant that's, that's a restaurant of your liking and where you know it is safe. And so you go down the line. Nobody wants to put their family in a house that is not safe. Nobody wants to put their family in a school that is not safe. Nobody wants to go to a club where it's not safe. Nobody wants to be on a road that is not safe. And therefore, why would you put the responsibility of running the country for the next four years in the hands of people who are not responsible, in the hands of people who won't take good care of it? And, and that is why I believe uh, we need um, more political conscientization and awareness. And when I was, uh, as long as I'm in the classroom, I teach political conscientization, but not only political. You, you need to teach our young people about making choices. Um, what friends do you choose? Um, you know, sometimes I'm with people and I see them, uh, they're drinking themselves into a coma. And I would like, stop, don't give him any more drinks. Not because I don't drink. That's my choice. So anybody who feels happy having a drink, I have no problem with it. But why would you overdo it? And I'm saying, no. You've got to teach people to make the right choices. And it doesn't mean that everybody, when you teach them to make the right choices, would vote for only one political party. But at least it would have to be based on a choice you made, based on consciousness, based that you believe that party or that candidate would do the right thing for me. What specific thoughts do you have on improving public health for the elderly and the long wait for specialized medical attention for the general public? Public health, um, the, the, the problem that we've had in the past was that the different, um, you, you, you separated the different insurance coverages. So you had one for civil servants, you had one for retired civil servants, you had one for pensioners, you had one for people who um, have no doctor card or no medical insurance, they get a free doctor card now. What we are doing with the National Health Insurance Plan, we are putting everybody, everybody in it. It all come out of one fund. Um, to avoid that you have, uh, because if you have only pensioners, which is a small group of people, but they're also high risk. Because the pensioner starts getting high blood pressure, 
the pensioner starts getting prostate cancer, the pensioner is who's getting hypertension, the pensioner who's getting diabetes, the pensioner, the pensioner, the pensioner. Um, so if their premium is already low, and even if you keep jacking it up, it's a small group of people who have who the pension plan need to spend a lot of money on. So by introducing the National Health Insurance Plan, the way we include everybody, it would go much faster. Secondly, you had um, this whole issue with um, some of these institutions being in Willemstad. And decisions need to be made down there. And if they are not processing payment fast enough, then you get the problems that we have been getting. Thank God we've been able to resolve that now, so you're not going to see drugstores and doctors and hospitals refusing to take what is the base at card or the FSOC card, um, you would have one insurance and all the decisions will be made locally. So you no longer would need to wait on a decision that has to come from a minister on Curacao or from a doctor on Curacao. I know um, I had to take my wife to a specialist overseas. And then the request is made here by her house doctor, but the paperwork needs to be sent to Curacao for a doctor on Curacao to evaluate a patient he has never seen in his life. And just by looking at the paperwork, he would have to say, yes, it is okay. But what are you basing it on? Um, so all those decisions now are decisions that will be taken on St. Martin by specialists on St. Martin, uh, by people on St. Martin, um, is the minister is on St. Martin, not a minister on Curacao. So you would see improved, improved service in, 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 in the first week already. Do you have an integral plan of action comprising how to combat crime? Crime is, is something uh, that go hand in hand with the economic situation on the island, that go hand in hand uh, with economic, uh, with education opportunities that exist. If we ignore our young people, we don't train them. We don't provide adequate training. We allow them to drop out of school. We allow them to sit on the block. We allow them to become adults, become parents, and they don't have an income. We are asking young people to get involved in criminal behavior. Um, if someone gets a job, and before he can settle in and enjoy his job, or read the benefit of the job, he is told in the next two months, uh, you going home, you're out of a job. So a combination of proper education opportunities coupled with uh, secured job opportunities uh, with programs to keep our young people on the straight that reduces their, their reason for getting involved in criminal behavior. But this would sound like it's only young people then who are committing crime. No. Um, there are elderly, uh, there are older people who are also involved in criminal behavior. Um, the whole plan of approach for the prison spells out in detail how we are going to improve our policing. Um, yesterday, I was happy to be introduced to the new uh, chief of um, the judicial department uh, because that's a vacancy that we had. And we recently had the promotion of Officer John. We recently had the appointment of Peter De Witte, the new police chief. We have sworn in a number of uh, police officers in the past six months. Um, we have, in, you know, we, we have um, sworn in uh, many more. Um, we have sw sworn in police officers. But also the program calls for more technical equipment. Because you've had a spate of robberies. And when you speak to some of the people and you say, um, so what happened? 